With Entity Framework Core, there's an easy way to store your date times as UTC in the database and then convert them back to your local time zone in your application. Stick around as I'll show you how to do it. Subscribe for more .NET and c -sharp videos. In order to convert dates into UTC in the database and then convert them back to your local time zone in your application, we need to create a value converter. Now in front of me I've got an ASP.NET Core Web API. We've already got a DB context set up for it. Let's create the value converter. So we're creating a new class and we're going to call it date time UTC converter. Now for this to work, we need to import the Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Storage.ValueConversion. And then for the class, we need to implement the value converter class and we need to pass in a model and a provider. Now, because we're converting a date time to UTC and then another date time to your local time zone, we need to include the date time twice. So we include that for the model and the provider. Next, we need to create a constructor for it and we're going to override one of the base constructors. So we just call it like that and then we've got two base. We've got the expression from, so that's going to be the date time that goes into the database. And then we've got the date two that comes back from the database to the application. So because we're going to be storing it as universal time in the database, so we just call D to universal time. And when we're converting it back, we need to specify that it's a UTC time zone at first, and then we need to convert it to our local time zone. So to do that, we call date time dot specify kind. We pass in the instance of D and we specify that it is UTC because that's the time in the database. And then we convert it to our local time zone. And then from there, we just need to finish the constructor and make sure it compiles. We have a product entity set up in our DB context. It's got properties like the ID, the name, and the created. The created has a type of date time. Now, if we were to create a new product entity in the database, it would store the time in your local time zone rather than UTC. Now, in order to configure that, we've got a product configuration. This is configuring properties for our product entity. With the created, we're overwriting the column name and the column type. In order to add our value conversion, we need to import where it is, so it's in round the code .date .data .value converters. And then within the creative, we need to call has conversion and create a new instance of our date time UTC converter. So now with the creative property, when we create a product entity, it will store the date time as UTC in the database and then convert it back to your local time zone when using it in your application. To test this out, we're going to create an ASP.NET Core Web API controller to create an entity, and then we're going to get those records back from the database. So we've already got a products controller set up. It's already passing in the DB context from Entity Framework, and then we're going to create a new product entity. So we'll call our instance of the DB context. We'll call products, then add async, and create a new instance of our product entity. The name, we're going to call it as watch, and created, we're going to use datetime.now. Make sure that we save the changes. Now to get all the products, we're going to call our DB context.products and then to list async, which will retrieve all our products. We need to await the call and let's give it a test. We've set up our machine so it's in Pacific time zone. Now normally that's eight hours behind UTC, but because it's currently in daylight savings at time of recording, it's actually seven hours. So when we store it in the database, we expect the time to be seven hours ahead of how we should see it in the application. Let's test out the API endpoints that we just created. So we'll create a product. It's returned to 204 no content response, so we know it's successful. We go into the database, into the products table, we refresh the database, it's created our product entity, and it's got a UTC time of 11.14. So when we look at this in the application, we expect that to be seven hours behind, so it should say 414. If we test that out, we can see our product entity there. It's specifying that the time is seven hours behind at 414, and also specifying that the time is seven hours behind UTC. We're now going to change the time zone from Pacific to Eastern. Now Eastern is five hours behind UTC, but because it's in daylight savings, it's actually only four hours behind. So when we run it in our application, we expect the time to only be four hours behind UTC. Restarting the application, we test the request. 
and our watch product now has a created time of 7.14 and it's only four hours behind UTC. So that's how you do it for one date time, but what if you have lots of date times? How do you convert them all its UTC in the database and then convert them back as your local time zone in the application? To make this work, we need to go into our DB context and we need to override the on model creating method. Now we're already doing this because we're applying configurations from the assembly, but we also need to write some additional code. First of all, we need to create a new instance of our datetime UTC converter. So we do that. And now we need to loop through each of the entities and then each of the properties from those entities and see what properties are date times. Now to loop through each of the entities, we get each entity type and we get it from model builder .model .get entity types. Now to get each of the properties in the entities, we get each property from entity type .get properties. So we get each of the properties from each of the entities. We need to check which ones are date times. We do that by calling the property.clr type and we check whether it's a type of date time. If it is, all we need to do is recall the set value converter in the property and then just pass in our date time UTC converter instance. Now this will work for date time, but if you've got nullable date times, it's not going to work. We need to do another check for the CLR type if it's a nullable date time. If it is, once again, we call property.setValueConverter and this time we're going to have to create a new value converter. So we call the new value converter and for the model and the provider, we pass in a nullable date time. Now for the from expression, we need to specify whether V has a value, and if it does, we convert it into universal time, which is how it will be stored in the database. So we call V.value, and then convert it to universal time. Otherwise, we just specify it as V. Now with the expression 2, once again, we need to check whether it's got a value, and if it has got a value, we specify that the date time is a UTC time, so we pass in the value for that, and then specify that it's a UTC kind. And then we convert it to the local time. So here we're specifying whether it's got a value. We specify that the kind is a UTC, and then we're going to convert it to the local time zone. Otherwise, if it's nullable, we just return V. We're going to test this out with a category entity that we've created. The similar entities to the products, we've got the created there, but if we go to the configuration, we specifically haven't specified the date time UTC converter. So we can see if it's going to work for us or not. We've put our time zone back to Pacific time zone. Let's create a new category. So we've created a new category entity and it's returned a 204 no content. In the categories table in the database, let's refresh it. It's created a category of watches and the UTC time is 1152.37. Now because we're back with Pacific time zone, when we look at it in our API, we expect that to be seven hours behind at 4.52. Let's test that out. Let's send the request. And it's got our category of watches and it's got the time at 4.52, specifying that it's seven hours behind UTC. So that's one way of how you can store dates in the database using Entity Framework Core. And it's particularly important if your application spans multiple time zones. And if you want to know more about Entity Framework Core, watch our six part series on how to get started with Entity Framework Core. And let me know in the YouTube comments what you think about this video. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.